the Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday Fan Podcast. Well done. Thanks. Um, welcome, everybody. We are doing a Wednesday Week lockdown special this week. And as you can see, um, we have Sean McAllister with us. Thanks for joining us, Sean. No how problem. Is, Good to be here. How is lockdown treating you so far? Um, obviously, it's frustrating, the lack of football. Like, we're all um, obviously disappointed with the way it's going, but um, nothing you can do about it. Things are more important. But for me personally, it's been, it's been fine, really, because uh, I had the birth of my first son a week before lockdown. It's given me a chance just to stay with him and, and be around. So that's... Uh, for me, it's been a bit of a positive. Extended leave to get to know the little one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, we just want to ask you a few things about your time at Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, and a bit more about what happened, who you got to know. Um, obviously, you left under Irvine, is that yeah, right? That's yeah, that's right, yeah. So that's probably something that might come up. I think that's come up with a few people we've spoken to. Okay. Um, so, as far as I remember, did you come from Bolton's Academy? That's right, yeah. I, I, I started when I was nine at Man United, had three years there and then four years at Bolton Lundgren's. Um, it's funny actually because uh, I'd say consistently it's me and one other lad who were the better players in the age group, but um, especially now I'm on the coaching side, I can kind of see why they didn't offer me a scholarship because at the time um, it was Sam Allardyce's manager and I probably did not fit the profile. I'm in an academy now with, with Shrewsbury Town and we talk about profile of players and stuff and seeing that on the other side now um, kind of made me realise the problem wasn't right for that academy at the time. It hurt, there's no question about that. But anyway, so I got released from Bolton at 16 and then um, Sheffield Wednesday called me about two weeks later, said, oh, I've been surprised you've been released, um, but we've got a game this weekend if you, if you fancy coming on trial. I went, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, who's it against? And he said, Bolton Wanderers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> um, ended up having having a really good game, to be fair. Um, even the staff come up to me afterwards and say, well, I think through gritty teeth that the first half was the best player on the pitch. So, um, kind of felt good at the time, but straight away after the game, um, the staff come up to me and said they wanted me to sign it at Wednesday. So, didn't really mess about or anything, just, just got it signed. So, yeah, it was... Uh, so what did you have to do at 16? Did you just have to move over to Sheffield? Did you have to move into Diggs or? Yeah, I was in Diggs. Um, the lad, uh, I mean, was a really nice family. I still keep in touch with now. They had two two boys. One was, he's only a month younger than me, but I had an August birthday, so it was a year below. Um, mm -hmm. But he was at Sheffield Wednesday's Academy at the time. Um, he didn't end up getting a scholarship, but uh, I think it was a year later, ended up, Signing for Sheffield United on a second year scholar. Um, Who was that? Uh, Joel Burks. I don't know if you ever heard of him now. Um, so, anyway, we're like obviously the Derby days, we're driving in the same car to go to the games. He's in a red tracksuit, I'm in a blue. You know, <laughs> but I think, uh, I think I won one and he won one. So, ended up uh, even. So, we're quite happy with that. <laughs> So, do you still keep in touch with anyone from, especially from the academy, I guess? Because obviously I knew you lot around then because my boyfriend was in the academy. But do you still talk to any of those? Like, have you got lifelong friends from then? Um, like, if I ever come across any, anyone, I always, always speak to them. There's obviously social media. I'm not obviously living that way anymore. I'm over in, in Shrewsbury now. So <laughs> it's hard to keep in touch as much. But, um, like, I think I text, I, I text Truth all, but, like, probably last month or so just seeing how, how he's going on and stuff and when obviously seeing Tommy retired through injury and just sent him a message and you know just the usual like Instagram Twitter type mm -hmm. type things and if I see something I tend not to message too much on them I try and give them a text so it's a, a bit more personal but um, obviously don't see him face to face or, or chat that much but if there's any ever anything that comes up then you know, I do call certain people. Spoke to Barry Court, who I was close with, um, on the time at Wednesday. So, I literally spoke to him, I think, last week, maybe. And he was on a, a coaches meeting about a month ago. So, I was chatting to him then, and just had just had general catch up. So, there, there are certain people that, that I stay in touch with, and then yeah, they come. And you do follow us because I seem to remember bugging you quite drunk at Wembley. What's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I actually went down with, with Joel that day. So he, he worked, he's working in London. So he went down and, uh, yeah, couldn't miss that one. Unfortunately, didn't go the way we wanted it to. But, um, yeah, it's obviously a, a, good, a good occasion seeing the fans as loud as ever. Brilliant sight. Cool. Guys, read it out to you. I actually went into the Sheffield derby as well when we got beat 4 2, unfortunately. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come in with, with this photo straight away. Um, oh, yeah, showed, this is amazing. I, yeah, I showed this lot earlier. Now, I'll, I'm 19, so back in 2008, I were a mascot against um, Coventry. And I pulled, pulled this one up yesterday. Let's try and get the camera. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, good effort. I, I, I pulled that one. That was Coventry. I think we lost one nil. Clinton Morrison scored. Right. But scored a, a diving header or something. I think. But, yeah. Away, away or at home? At home. At oh. mm. I can't remember that game. To be honest, did I play? <laughs> okay, honestly. So I, I played Coventry that. a few times, but I can always seem to remember him away from home. Mm. Um, I think one was in like my first. Breakthrough season. I actually had one at home where I went off injured. Um, so yeah, it's just difficult to remember. <laughs> remember it ain't, ain't the best. Of, uh, ain't the best anyway. So uh, I, 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 I pulled that one out. Um, just pulled it out yesterday. Because obviously, grow, I started going maybe started going regular two thousand seven eight. So you you were really midfield. But when I, I first started going, so like I said to this lot again, like they, they had John Sheridan, and now we're lucky enough to have you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see comparison. Oh, yeah. It was a great time, no, probably looking back. Who, who, were, who were your best friend at the club at that time, then? Um, obviously, there's a lot of us come through the academy. Mm. The academy was really, you look back now and see how, how well it did in them, them three age groups. So it was myself, obviously, Tommy Spur. Mark Beavers, Richard Wood was two years older, a year older, two years older. Um, Drew Talbot come through, Richard O'Donnell. So across like such a small gap, there's a lot of players who went on to have 10 plus years careers, which um, to produce that is... is that was probably the really. best time that our youth teams had, really, looking back at, it, at the careers that some of like, that era of youth players had gone on to have. It's a lot better than what we've <laughs> produced lately really yeah I, I, I just don't I mean I don't if they're not being produced or not or if the opportunity is there or not I'm not too mm -hmm. sure obviously there's a lot of money being pumped into it now mm -hmm. the wages are astronomical are you going to play a kid in front of someone who may be on yeah, yeah. tens of thousands a week so mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean it's, it's, it's really difficult I've had I've had that problem mm -hmm. later in my career at Scunthorpe where I, I was like on quite a low wage and there's players on three times as much and managers have to have to um the chairman asks questions of managers why we why we've got him on so much when we can have yeah so they have to kind of back back the reasons for why they sign players and stuff so it's difficult and especially when say players are on so much now for them young lads coming through it must, must be it must be hard to get the breaks at the time when i was coming through obviously we weren't that well off um so it, looking back, it was just a, a good opportunity. And even then, a lot kind of had to happen for me to even get me opportunity. Um, well, my, my breakthrough season, should I say, not my opportunity, because I think I, I made my debut two years before I actually properly made my, made my breakthrough. So, yeah, even even then, I needed a bit of luck. So <laughs> when, when, you, when you first broke in... Obviously, there was a, there was a gap between first getting there and becoming established. When you, you first made it into that sort of first team settle, what was the atmosphere like around the around the group? Was it one of optimism? Because obviously we've we, we've been through dark days. We were a few years out of the Premiership, gone down to League One. We get to that point where we were starting to get back up. Um, was it? We, we, did you feel? Did we feel like we were on an upward curve at that point? Um, yeah, definitely for me. Um, I think my second year scholar. So just as a probably was with the reserves regularly and just training every now and then with the first team was the year we got promoted um, in, in Cardiff. So um, club was on a massive high at the time. 
Sturrock was there and uh, yeah, you're going into the championship and still believing with the size of the club it is that we should give, give it a right go. So um, some of the players we had at the time, you know, yeah. Chris Burns, Glenn, Glenn Whelans, who, you know, quality, quality players and we've had full belief that we'd, that we'd do well. I think in the first year back, we did reasonably well, stayed up quite comfortably and I think the second year was a bit of a struggle, the season where Wester got sacked. So, um, but managed to stay up, I think, to last. I managed to stay up comfortably in the end, I think, because Brian lost cover and got on an amazing run, actually. But then it was the following season when I made my, my proper breakthrough as such. So um, it was definitely on a, on a high with with down moments where you're thinking we might be fighting relegation, but still always having the belief that we had, had the quality. Um, I think when relegation did come again in, in my last year there, it came kind of out of the blue. Um, so. That was a bit of a downer, but I always say I think I only, only played like seven games that year, which is crazy. Obviously, Irvine coming and just didn't, didn't quite work, so. A bit of a what was it with Irvine? I heard a lot about people having issues with him, or he just, obviously, the fans weren't particularly um, aware of him. Um, obviously, he's done well for himself since on a coaching side of things, but it seems to be more of the managerial side that people struggled with, I think. Yeah, he obviously came in with a, a massive reputation because of the, the coach he is, and he was, he was a really good coach. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. For me, for me personally, it was, it was just strange. I think, he was it like November, December time he come in? Um, yeah. And the, uh, the rest of the season, I, I got 10 minutes in a game. We were 5-0 down at Reading away. Come on for the last ten minutes. I didn't get that. Right. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't get one of the chance, and I was I was gutted really because obviously it's a club that that meant so much. And you actually, I had at the time that my agent was saying, "Oh, Brighton <laughs> in the league below at the time might love to take you on loan, but go in and speak to him." So I went and spoke to him and said, "Like, I'm going to get my chance here because I want to be here." Um, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, you'll get it." And that was my chance for ten minutes. So um, gutted. Nothing for me personally, but he, I never had any problems with him or anything. Never any bust ups, and I don't really think he had any any bust ups when he plays or anything. So he went like that, and he was he was a good coach. Mm. Um, I just think at the time that they probably went down the wrong path. The whole club, where the season before we had a back four of Frankie Simmer, Richard Wood, Mark Beavers, Tommy Spur, and now they were obviously young lads, and every now and then one of them would make a mistake and they kind of hold it against them that all oh, the young lads that they're making mistakes and it came to the end of the season it's like right we need experience to to cut these mistakes out and um obviously we brought in like Darren Purse and I just think the way the championship was going it might have been better sticking with what we had in in or even bringing Purse to have like an effect because he had the experience and that to get the best out of them but maybe like starting week in week out um, myself, we had James O'Connor come in in midfield, and me, me and I, I felt like me and Darren Potter worked really well together at the time. I thought I got the best out of Potts, and when he went with James O'Connor, I think it kind of took. Not that Ginger was a bad player, because he, he was he was great, and I think at the time he was probably performing better than Potts was. But it just did, for some reason that combination just didn't work. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, I think they just kind of... How, how do you drop a player when he's performing better than someone else? It's, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and it, I don't think he could ever... If I never wanted to play me and Ginge because we're very similar players. Um, but yeah, for some reason, that the combination just didn't seem to work with that experience and, and youth, I think. Didn't he go off like America or something? Yeah, mm. well, he's coaching there now. Yeah. 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 yeah I'd say, say before... Yeah, I think... He, He's gone to Orlando now, hasn't he? he? was at Louisville, which was like a feeder club for Orlando. Mm. Um, and yeah, he's gone coaching them. I think he actually played for him at first with, with Luke Bowden. Mm. Um, but, I mean, again, it, it weren't anything against, I'm not saying they were bad players, but it just didn't seem to, to work for some reason. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was just a strange season, that one, where they were good players, but it just didn't, didn't click for some reason. From what I heard, what what I've like heard about Irving, I listened to Under the Cosh podcast, which is John Parkin and Chris Brown, um, and, and they were both at Preston under Irving, and they said it, 
as you say, were brilliant coach and everything, but in at times they thought said they were a bit too nice to be a manager, like a manager in his own right. That might be why I'm saying there was no bust ups. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, possibly maybe wasn't that that fear there that sometimes you need as a, mm. as a manager that players need to kind of fear you in a bit of a way to get that bit more out of them. Mm. Here she is. <laughs> That's the other one. <laughs> is it? Oh, twins. Guess, guess who? Um, yeah, so maybe that, that might have been why why that comment kind of comes in and why I say there was, there was no bust ups. And I, I say when I spoke to him, he, he, was, he was fine and spot on. I, just, I was just gutted I never got that chance to, to help out because, say, the season before, we were going to be finished 12th or some top, top yeah, half yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, and I played nearly every game that season. And I just felt. I was worth an opportunity, or, or even a look anyway, when, when we're in the bottom three and didn't really get out of it at any point. So, I think so what, what were you kind of your highlights then while you were at Wednesday? Like, what, what are the like standout moments that you remember, even if they were like academy or obviously me? Um, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, the obvious ones the, the first day, my debut. Um, Funny one, actually. It was at Southampton, my debut away. We were 3-0 down and I'd come on. But the week before was the first time I'd ever been on the bench. And it was in the derby at home at, at Hillsborough. I think we lost 2-1. Um, so one where Michael Tong scored the free kick. Um, so I was on the bench anyway. And we were 2-0 down with about 15 minutes to go. And uh, Stuart tells me to go get warmed up. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm getting on my debut in the derby. It's like 36,000 or whatever is going mad. I'm running down the touchline towards the away end. I'm getting death threats and everything, piggy this and all that. I'm like, just soaking in and actually laughing at it, to be honest. Um, I, was, I was buzzing. And then uh, I think it got to about the 78, 79th minute or something. And uh, we got a penalty. Uh, I think it might have been Macker who scored it. And I'm there stretching. I, I look to the bench. 2-1, and Sturridge goes, sit, sit back down. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, I couldn't make him a debut now. So uh, I was good to know that. I didn't get on. We unfortunately didn't get the equaliser either, but ended up um, going to St Mary's the following week. Uh, come on, and we were 3-0 down after about, I think come on after about 65, 70 minutes, or something like that. Um, uh, got him why actually in, in the game I was, I was on the right side of the diamond I remember the, the ball went back to I think it was Paddy Collins uh, Patrick Collins yeah went back and he um, I made like a, an arch run along the, the back line he dinked a ball over the top going through on goal 1v1 and there was no way I was offside <laughs> <laughs> the linesman has got his flag and I'm like it's my debut, the dream, scoring on your debut, and you have just killed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but I was buzzing, obviously, to get to get on the pitch. So that, that was definitely one highlight. Um, into, into the next season, it was Plymouth away where I scored my first goal. 1-0 um, down, scored the equaliser, ended up winning the game 2-1. So, uh, get going, long bus journey back home. but. With the biggest smile on my face, getting texts through for phone off all my mates, <laughs> pictures of my name on Sky Sports, uh, Biddy Printer, and that. So that, that was obviously a high high point. And then, um, without doubt, the Sheffield Derby, the, the one 0 win. No. It was on. It was it on last weekend on the Wednesday's uh, YouTube? Yeah, they've been showing a few, haven't they? So it was. Uh, yeah, the, just the whole day was unbelievable. The atmosphere. That we won the night, <laughs> everything is great. So, obviously, you knew from a young age that you were going to be a footballer. Then, if you were taken up by Man United at nine, there was obviously something was going to go pretty well. Um, but was it always sort of planned out for you? Has it been like a family thing, or was it just um, he spotted you were all right at it? And there we go. I mean, my dad was into football. I've got an older brother who didn't take to it, so I don't know if he he's like, right, my second son, I'm going to make him one or not, I don't know. But no, when I was about six, I went into a Sunday league team. And I hated it, didn't enjoy it whatsoever. So my dad pulled me out for a year. Um, I think 
I think I still liked football, but just didn't enjoy going in with the team and that. And he just took me on, on the field, developed me self that way. Um, and then he, he put me back in a, a year later. Um, and I, I loved it again. So I was back, back to liking football. And then I think the first game I played, I, I was I was a left back at the time. And the first game I played, I was stood. I knew the goalkeeper from a few years ago. So I stood at the back chatting to the goalkeeper, just playing everyone on side. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, and like, everyone's, Sean, get up, get up. And like having a go at me and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't have a clue because never played games or anything. Um, by the end of the year, I had, a, I had a trial at Man United. So I know I got the most improved player award. And I know people think that's a bit of a, a joke trophy now on the handouts. But for me, it literally was went from, standing at the back chatting to a keeper to a trial with United but um, yeah I've had lots of ups and downs released from United released from Bolton released from Wednesday um, so there's plenty of downs but I've always wanted to be a footballer I think and a lot of the knockbacks but I never it's almost I, I look at my own, game, my own game and I always know I need to work hard and that and I won't be afraid of that but like, even when I'm saying release from Bolton, I thought, literally, I couldn't have done any more there. I've done everything right. I just wasn't for them. So it's like, right, on to the next one. Um, I don't think I've ever left a club and thought, you know what, I can't. I, I was terrible there. I've, I've let myself down. I, I've always thought, you know, I've, I've given it everything I could. It just wasn't for them. And then, uh, well, at that time, and then it's just on to the next one. So even now, I'm still... Still doing the same, so. <laughs> well, well, what like, made you uh, stop playing then? Say again. What made you stop playing? I'm not stopped. You're not that old. Oh. Yeah, but you're coaching, aren't you? I'm coaching, yeah, but uh, I'm at Newtown, which is the okay. Welsh Premier League side. I've had my last four years have been a bit, a bit mad, really. I, had, I left Scunthorpe. Had a two-year, um, signed two years at Grimsby. Um, I thought it was going to be like brilliant, but I ended up getting injured early on with um, it's like a, a chronic groin problem, but no one could diagnose it. I saw countless physios, I saw specialists, they had an operation. Um, and what, what should have took two weeks to recover from if I got the right treatment ended up taking me 14 15 months. So, um it's just a strange one. I kept every, every time I go into training, I just break down and I'd rest, I'd strengthen, feel like I was all right to go back in, and but that'd be another month down the line, and then try again. I'd break down, then I'd try a different style of treatment, come back, break down. Had an operation that took three months, come back, broke down. So it's uh, mentally it was quite tough, um, and then eventually I did get the right treatment where I thought, right, I know I'm right now. Everything feels fine. Um, but by that time, I think Grimsby had kind of washed their hands with me a little bit. Um, I, I, got, I got one game and that, and that was it. And I think that was kind of a bit of fan pressure that kind of got me that one game as well. So, because uh, I think we'd gone 16 games on, without a win or something. Um, so, then eventually, they did get one game. Well, that, that was it. And since then, because I've hit the 30 mark and in two years, I'd, I'd played six games. It doesn't really read well on the CV. And literally, I'd, I'd been ringing around, hoping to get trial and in places. But um, no one wants a 30-year-old. That's, uh, that's only played six games. And now, now I'm 32. Thankfully, um, Newtown had given the chance in the Welsh Prem. Um, I played 24 games this year, which is pretty much every one. Um, other than other than I think one game against TNS. So um, it's been it's been good just to get back playing. I've literally a, a full season with them. Well, full season minus COVID-19. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I've, I've enjoyed it. They play, they play good football, which is, which is good. Um, and everything's on Astro, so the ball run, runs quite true, kind of allows it. Um, I went, to, I was at Chester last year and it's a bit of a, a dog fight down there. With, with every game you're scrapping and, and going to the Welsh League, and it's very much football based. So that's been that's been quite good. Bit oh, oh, so oh, oh, just uh, under the two that were at Salford. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. what them two like? The, the, obviously, we've seen a lot of them 
through the documentaries that, that's been with Salford, I was just wondering what it were actually like as a player to be under him. Top guys. Mm. Every, everyone asks the same question when you talk about Chester, but honestly, they're, they're spot on. They, they are the managers and, and not so much coaches. Um, but that's definitely, I can see where their, where their um, success has come from because they know how to get the best out of the players. Um, they're not afraid to give you a bit of a, a hairdryer every now and then. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it'd be, it never comes to blows or anything, but they'll tell you home truths if you need to hear it, which is, which is good. And I think the show, obviously, at Salford kind of showed them in a bad light as such. Mm. But I think you can, they've, they've had players that have followed them for years and gone with them everywhere. And you can kind of see why. Um, so, yeah, they're, honestly, top, top guys. And they were, they were completely honest with me as well. I went, I went there. I think I'd not had a club since Grimsby, um, since I got released from Grimsby, and it was like January. They said um, they already had three midfielders around the 30, 30 year old mark, but one was one was injured, one was no two were injured at the time. So they said, "Look, we we need someone, and you need games. So just come in and see see what you can do." Um, end of the season is literally not going to be anything there, but it might put you in the shop window again. Um, I ended up playing nine nine games for him. Um, but yeah, the, the lads who oh, were over 30, the one who was injured, he already had a contract for the next season. The other one, up to that point, had been the player of the season. So it was never it was never going to be anything for the following year there. But I'd say I've gone to, to Newtown since then. And Newtown, we only train once a week, play at the weekends. It kind of gives me a chance to build up my coaching CV at the same time. Not that. If an opportunity come back to go full time, I'd turn it down. I, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's good. It's good to build up that coaching CV whilst um, whilst still playing, whilst I'm still able to play. I can't hear. You're on mute, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you were like me last week. With you. Oh my! God. Yeah, sorry about that. Just asking where the, the 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 opportunity to get into the coaching came from. Um. So when I was at, when I, we, moved, we moved back to Shrewsbury in about September after I left Grimsby because I was over in Doncaster at the time. Um, me and the missus, she's from Shrewsbury. I met her when, when I played here. Um, so we decided, like, let's just get out and leave and go back now because that's where this side of the country is kind of where we want to be because my family's in Manchester, as in Shrewsbury. So you just give us a chance to get set up. Um, and I come over, I signed for Chester, which, again, it's part-time. So whilst I was doing that, using my, my contacts with Shrewsbury, um, got in touch with the head of coaching and just went in with the under 18s, uh, off my own back, like not being paid or anything, just voluntary, just going in, learning, giving my bits of knowledge to them and, and helping out that way. Um, new academy managers come in, David Longwell, who, who's been unbelievable, he's uh, trans, transformed the academy completely, kind of. It was a Cat 3 Academy when, when he, before he come in. It kind of looked like that, the, the office, everything. But he's, he's come in and he, he's looking at Cat 2 Academies now, Cat 1 Academies, and he's trying to, well, he, he has, he's improved it tenfold. Um, so, yeah, I've been in. And he, he actually then offered me the job to go with the 16s this year. Um, and he, he spoke to the head of the community, which... Uh, have then offered me a, a job as like football coordinator there. So I'm working for Shrewsbury Town and the community during the days full time. I've got academy at part time at nights and weekends, and then uh, Newtown on a Tuesday night and a Saturday. So quite busy, but to go from not doing a lot with Grimsby to what I'm doing now, it's it's I'd much rather this to be honest. <laughs> yeah, obviously changed a little bit. Weeks, uh... Can anyone hear that? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> we let him out sometimes, let him on the internet. And it never goes very well. <laughs> so obviously you've got your hands full. Um, obviously become a dad just before lockdown. So how does that fit in with having 50 jobs? Well, I say right now it's been fine because of the lockdown. <laughs> um, but when when I go back, it could be uh, it could be a bit full on and. Uh, yeah, after, thankfully my missus does a lot of it. I, I need to start getting prepared for it now, I think, and just leave it with a baby when 
when he needs to. I just do the fun bits, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let prepare for it, but um, no, I'm back. I'm back working with the community next week. The academy has been shut down completely. Probably looking till next season by the looks of it. Um, but I'm still doing loads of CPD work, the um, development, the personal development stuff. So, is uh, the academy put one, two things, Zoom calls on each week, and the community will put another on. So I'm still doing plenty of that whilst whilst I've been here. But no, it's good. It's uh, something I want to do. I think my target is to get in the first team level. That's where I want to get to. It's what I've kind of known for the last 14, 15 years. But definitely um, taking the right steps to get there, I think. So what would you say tomorrow if the new little man turned around, or maybe not tomorrow, but in a few years and said he wanted to be a footballer like Daddy? I'm buzzing with it, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, get my ball straight away. Don't worry, I'll have plenty of balls around the house. Forcing, I'm forcing to like it. <laughs> Do you think it's something oh. that, you know, you would, you, are you going to be football dad? Are you going to be dragging him along to everything and coaching from the sidelines? Um, I, don't, I honestly don't know. My, my, my dad, he was a football dad, but he was always quiet on the sideline, wouldn't say anything, and then he'd get me in the car after and let me know. <laughs> I always know if uh, if you had a bad training session or a bad game, I'd always sit in the back seat. <laughs> if you ever had a good a good session or or a good game, we'd be there right next to him. Go on, Dad, tell me. <laughs> so yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, obviously if he likes football and wants to do it, then great. I'd uh, I'd help him as much as I can, push him. I won't be here, uh, you know, and take tips from my dad the way he was, but. Um, Miss is quite athletic as well, so I can. I'd expect him to have some sort of sporty background to uh, sporty upbringing. So, cool. Just going back on the back on the Wednesday then, because we, we've gone off it for. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, so you would have been around, obviously, around the club when we did the double over United. Did we involved at all with the game? I, c I can't remember. Yeah, it was definitely a sending off. <laughs> but, was that the double uh, year? Yeah, the first, uh, Good the first game, yeah. 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 Where I, he's forgot, got, I forgot that was the same game, same year. Yeah, yeah. Got got sent off for siding me down. Yeah. Uh, to, to be fair, it's, it was a booking, weren't it? But I wasn't going to complain. <laughs> I got there and he, he just caught me down, down my shoulder. To be honest, there wasn't like, there wasn't like loads of pain or anything. I just, I was, I was down. Thinking, God, he's, he's caught me a little bit, but I'm not like. And the physios come on, just gone. I just stay down, stay down. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, all right. And then next thing I know, he's gone. Yep, he's sent off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, okay. And then I got into the changing room after, and I had massive stun marks right down my back, shoulder, right down. I thought, Jesus, a bit, a bit higher, and then it probably should have been a sent off, but. Let's be honest, it probably was a booking, but none of us were complaining. It was Mike Dean, um, yeah. referee. Yeah. 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 Young, young Mike Dean sending someone off. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? I oh, know, eh? <laughs> no, is that the same game that JJ got sent off? Yeah, he booted yeah. the bottle oh, over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what Great, was that like in room after? We all said. <laughs> well, no, because we won the game and it didn't really matter yeah. anyway because he was... It was off. It's strange, wasn't it? You won a lot. Getting something. He had a, a reasonably good game as well, causing quite a few problems. And then he just started. It's yeah, that it's fire, it's that fire he's got in him, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's always had that. And that's how he plays, I guess, isn't it? And, uh, some, you just get angry over nothing. What do what, 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 what you like around the club, JJ? Honestly, top, top guy. But he just had a switch in him sometimes <laughs> where he'd go angry when training. But outside of football, yeah, sound. And say when you're a young lad coming in, um, yeah, he was absolutely fine, honestly. Um, great, great lad. But yeah, he's just, uh, just had a hot, hot headed sometimes. And then when, when he is, trying to calm him down is impossible. You can try your best, but it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Were there any good stories from around that time that we wouldn't have heard about, or? <laughs> well, funny ones. Yeah. Uh, we had obviously 
I mean, I'm trying to think. So, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, we're, at, we're at Preston away. Um, I think we got we got one all up, uh, cross it for Franny, and he put it in. Um, so half time comes, great, everyone's buzzing. We go out for the start of the second half, we're out quite early, and it's our kick off. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I take a kick off with Franny now, a little pass and move it on. So I'm, I'm stood there, he comes up, and he goes, uh, Sean, and I'm there thinking, oh, he's gonna say, come on, a bit more of that, or like, keep getting forward, keep whipping the ball, whatever, it's just something, something like that. And he goes, I think, I think, I think I've shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went, huh? Yeah, 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 I think I'll fight and, and follow through. <laughs> I was like, I was looking around, their team set up, our team set up, but the refs are still in the changing room. And I'm like, well, just get yourself in quick and get sorted. And he's like, Jack, I've got time. I was like, well, they're not out yet, so get yourself in. <laughs> so you see him running back off behind the goal into the changing room. Just as he gets into the tunnel, the refs are coming out. I'm thinking, geez, I bet he's told them as well. So he's gone, obviously gone into change room. I can imagine him asking John and, uh, and Pete, like, fresh pants and that. <laughs> getting them whipped out of there. Next thing, everyone's waiting around for like a couple of minutes. Like, what, what's going on? I'm like, he, he, he shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, the fans are probably thinking, oh, I don't know, he needs to change a stud or something. The way around, but yeah, he got himself back on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just thinking about that. Funny. Well, that's not one we'd have heard. No, no. So yeah, if you ever wonder why there's a delayed start to the second half, there you go. <laughs> Franny doing a uh, thing of Gary Lineker. <laughs> we'll go mention that. Yeah, ninety nine. Uh, <laughs> Lucky, he was like, I say, the game wasn't going on, so yeah, finally could get himself off and get ready. I think the game ended up. John Parker actually scored last last kick of the game. Absolutely got to play really well. He was an Alan Irvine team as well. So I think I remember that game. I remember yeah. Parker scoring late on for him. Yeah. yeah. So funny. Right, well, we know you're really, really busy obviously with the new bambino so we won't take up any more of your time but thank you so much for being on um, and yeah, we've had no loads of viewers already i've not had a chance to look for comments because every time i did it echoed so we'll just have to <laughs> find out later and um, but thank you so much and obviously we'll keep in touch and if there's ever an opportunity to get you on again maybe with the next teammate we'll let you know yeah, yeah no I'll, I'll say thanks for having me i always keep an eye out on how they're doing but that obviously means a lot so more than happy to do it Great, thank you. Just All right, cheers. Cheers. See you later. The Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday Fan Podcast.